Well, brackets are set for the men's and women's NCAA tournament, meaning March Madness is officially here. And with it, the billions of dollars in bets on the games. We recently reported on sports betting companies partnering with universities to promote their brands on campus and the threats it poses for students, many of whom are under the legal betting age. But it turns out problems are even more acute for student athletes. Paul Salman is back now with our latest report. And the story is a partnership with the Shirley Povich Center for Sports Journalism and the Howard Center for Investigative Journalism, both at the University of Maryland's Maryland College of Journalism. So you telling me we can win a game and I can make money? Yeah. No brainer. In 1994, decades before the Supreme Court overturned a ban on college sports betting, Arizona State University star point guard Stephen Smith was paid $20,000 by a gambler to make sure his team didn't win by more than six points. I just scored 39 points and we won the game. It's just all about winning. As long as you win it, nobody ever suspect nothing. Smith was eventually caught, however, went to prison. His fall is featured in the Netflix series Bad Sport. His justification at the time? We were making the school all that money. And we didn't get compensated at all. That is, money universities receive, mainly from TV deals and advertisers, not a dime of which, until recently, went to players. These days, star college athletes can make serious money. I'm always the coldest. To the Through name, image, and likeness sponsorship deals. But with sports betting now legalized in many states, student athletes no longer have to fix games to become vilified. For example, in the state of Ohio, where sports gambling became legal in January, He's got it. Goes to the hole. The University of Dayton basketball team lost a heartbreaker after leading big at halftime. The Rams are going to win this game. Accusations, presumably by gamblers who lost bets, promptly followed. You rigging games for sure. What a chump, tweeted someone. Hope you get caught. But there was absolutely no evidence of foul play. At a press conference, Coach Anthony Grant recoiled at the new gambling environment. It could really change the landscape of what college sports is all about. And when we have people that make it about themselves and attack kids because of their own agenda, it sickens them. The Ohio State gambling regulator now has threatened to ban anyone who attacks athletes online. Irrespective of gambling, the pressure on these kids to perform is immense. Trevor Wright helps run rules compliance at the nearby University of Cincinnati. I'm really worried that now because it's legal in Ohio and students of the university and, and general public, you know, are gambling on the University of Cincinnati basketball and football games and other events, that now they're publicly going to come out via social media or just in the crowd in general and say, you cost me money. And what does that do to the, the mental health of that athlete? Now, the NCAA prohibits its athletes from betting and warns athletes about gambling during and after their college careers. It's really challenging just to keep up with. NCAA Compliance Chief Clint Hunkabrow. From a state-by-state -state level, they're kind of legalizing the activity and then after the fact trying to adjust to that and put in place a lot more regulation and integrity efforts. So our primary concerns are twofold. One would be the health and well-being of our student athletes and second fold would be the, the integrity of our competitions. And there's actually another concern, which is why the NCAA helps pay for former English pro rugby player Mark Potter to scare student athletes straight by confessing his story, including his near suicide. I drove down the road, sat on a train station bridge and tried to psych myself up to jump off in front of one. Because Potter was a compulsive gambler, as some 6% of all gamblers become. At an even much higher rate are college-age gamblers, first time away from home, maybe drinking too much, and college athletes are several times more likely still to become addicted, according to Potter, for lots of reasons. Whether you feel like you have more sporting knowledge, whether you are using the competitive drivers and you're almost will to win to try and succeed at it, whether you are trying to replicate what you're not getting out of your sport. Potter shared his own story recently at the University of Cincinnati. 
I got injured. And that is honestly one of the worst things that ever happened to me. In just his second year as a rugby pro at 19, Potter sustained a series of injuries that kept him off the field. Hurt, bored, gambling became his way to replace the competitive high. Within a few short years... I was 24 and I was 70 grand in debt. I had no job at the end of the year, no prospect of another contract. And I'd suddenly got an Irish girl pregnant who lived in a different country. He moved to Ireland, started a family, and vowed the betting was behind him. But it wasn't. It started to become more and more unmanageable. And I had to go to great lengths to hide it from her. I used to have a house phone, and we used to pull the cord slightly out of the wall before I went to practice, because I didn't want people ringing or asking her for money when I wasn't there and I couldn't answer it. The money for household finances was going towards bets, until one day... A repo man came to our house and gave us an eviction notice. I hadn't paid our mortgage for months, and she didn't know. I owed $6,000 to my mortgage, and I had $42 in my bank account. The story becomes even more harrowing. Potter was arrested, ostracized, but even that didn't deter him. I went into my town, and I sold my wife's engagement ring and all of my kids' toys for $500. And I had to. I literally couldn't stop myself from doing it, and I did it, fully assuming I was going to win the money to pay her back. OK, enough. You get it by now. As did the student athletes, though we weren't allowed to shoot interviews or show their faces. But off camera, they were blown away, especially with the pawning of the kids' toys. Potter eventually reconciled with his family. After years of rehab, this is his ongoing therapy. Ultimately, my sports career was a, a failed one. And it was a failed one because of what was going on in the background. So the next best thing from that is to be able to provide information that other athletes don't have to go down the same route. But why is a former English rugby star focusing on America? It's a country that's 320 million people, 50 states, all with either no regulation or different regulation. Paul Buck founded the firm Potter works for. It really feels that this is the country where we should be spending most of our time from a, from a prevention point of view, because it feels like where we're, where we're needed the most. The company promotes education through lived experience, like Bucks, once a banker and such a problem gambler himself, he actually tried to commit suicide. I felt that the world would be a better place without me, you know, be, be that my wife, be that my kids, be that my employer, be that my friends. That's how low a place it can take you if, if gambling does get a hold of you. Via Buck's firm, Potter was brought to Cincinnati not just by the NCAA, but by European gambling giant Entain. So you're a gambling company that's doing education. Are you just protecting yourself, protecting your image? No, we're doing education to achieve long-term sustainability of these markets. So we're protecting the industry, that is right, but we're also protecting customers, our customers, and industry-wide customers, as well as the public at large. By trying to scare the most vulnerable among us straight, because in a free fall, free market, college kids need all the protection they can get. For the PBS NewsHour, Paul Salmon in Cincinnati.